Maggie Sainsbury. Breathing techniques and activities. These exercises are designed to maximise the student's ability to tackle a second language. In this case, looking at the characteristics of English. I introduce these exercises at all levels. And even if you have students that are coping well with English pronunciation, they can always develop their abilities through these exercises, just as native speakers can. The rationale for work on breathing is to enable the students to feel they have confidence in a strong, controlled breath supply. This helps them with the linking of English, it helps them with the rate of delivery, and it helps them, as we'll see soon, in the breath force that lies behind voiceless consonants. So English comes forward and out in your face. Bang, bang, bang. And so you need a, a strong breath supply. Lots of good breath. Not up here, but down here. So we're going to do some exercises that will help you breathe more deeply and have a stronger breath supply. For the next part, I'd like you to stand up and come towards me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with a stretch. So, stretch up, high as you can, and then flop down. <laughs> now we're going to take our deep breath, not up here, no, down here. Think the breath deep down into your stomach. So you put your hands there and feel the breath go all the way down to your stomach area. Breathe deeply, together. Breathe in. Out. And again, breathe in. In this next part, we're going to take a deep breath and then on that one breath, count out loud until you finish that breath. Deep breath now, in, then counting out loud. One, one two, two, three, three four, five, six, six seven, seven, strong eight, voice, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten eleven, eleven, twelve, twelve thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Well done. So if you remember the number you had today and tomorrow you try and get one more. English is an aggressively breathed language with a lot of voiceless consonants where the sound would not be made even without force of breath behind it. And some of our students that drop consonants uh, can at times be making them. I've got a Vietnamese student that says, my why? All the bits and pieces are in the right place, but without breath force behind it, we don't get wife. And this section is an awareness raising exercise for students in just how much breath they need to use, particularly on voiceless consonants. Now you've got all that good breath supply, we're going to look at how you use that breath in English. Think about these sounds. Okay, they're breath only. Think of no voice. Now we're going to look at how much breath you use and you'll see it for yourself on this top row of sounds. Let's try the first one. See how much you can make the paper move. Lots of breath. Good, see how much you can move that paper. And then try.
Limmering up is a workout for all the moving parts of the mouth involved in speech and it acts as a preparation for connected speech. The tongue, for example, is pure muscle and the more you exercise that and give the speaker control and flexibility of that organ, the more they're going to be able to find it responding in the way that they want it to. Now we're going to do some exercises for all the moving parts of your mouth, the tongue, the lips, and the jaw. And firstly, we'll start with this sound t, 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 slowly, slowly first. Then faster. Good. Fast as you can. Lots of breath. Then put it into words. Get out. Get, Get out. out. Doris, you tell me. Get out. Get out. Gang, you tell me. Get out. Get out. Oh, yes. <laughs> very, very good. Now we're going to do the l sound. Nice open mouth. La 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 I like yellow lollies. I like yellow lollies. I like yellow lollies. I like yellow lollies. Now the next one is shh, shh, Tongue back for shh, forward for shh. Now exercises for the lips. No voice. Lots of breath. Pink paper. Pink paper. Pink paper. Pink paper. Pink paper. Pink paper. Now, teeth on lip. Five. Five. Five flowers. Five flowers. Five flowers. Five flowers. Good. Five fresh flowers. Five fresh flowers. Lots of breath. Very nice. Now with voice. V -v 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 so the first one is going from a closed vowel to an open one. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Now we all say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. I want a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot. Good. And remember what we learnt in the beginning. Deep breath, head up, big voice. I want a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot. And this last one I want you to big, big voice. Maybe you're angry. I want a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot. I introduce these exercises at all levels. And even if you have students that are coping well with English pronunciation, they can always develop their abilities through these exercises, just as native speakers can. And what's more, they seem to love these exercises and I always get a very positive response.